Hey guys, my name is Jordan Hetrick and I'm the author of books about how to use GoPro cameras. In this video, I thought it'd be really helpful to show you guys a technique you can use to really make your night photos stand out. This is a super simple technique, but it's really effective and it works really well for traffic photos and also for star trail photos. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take multiple photos and merge them together, pulling out the light areas of each photo to really make the light stand out in these photos. When you take a night photo, you're actually keeping that shutter, which is like the camera's eye, open longer so that it can absorb more light onto the sensor. This allows you to basically write with light onto your camera's sensor. With an old film camera, for example, you could keep the shutter open all night long so that camera's looking all night and any light that passes in front of the camera is gonna be recorded onto the film. But digital cameras, like a GoPro and any other digital camera, aren't so good at handling that super long shutter time. So with digital cameras, it's better to use a technique where you record a shorter shutter time and then merge those photos together later. Since the maximum amount of time that you can keep a GoPro shutter open is for 30 seconds, you're not gonna be able to keep it open long enough for a star to travel across the sky or even for traffic to fill up a whole scene. So by merging multiple photos together, we can create some amazing images and I'm gonna show you how to do it. When you're setting up your GoPro to take night photos like we are for this tutorial, there are a few accessories that'll make it easier or make you capable of getting better photos. The first thing you just wanna do is set up your camera on a tripod so that when we do stack the images on top of each other, they line up perfectly. If you don't use a tripod, there is a way to stack them in Photoshop, but it's a little more complicated, so it's best to use a tripod. If you're recording the photos when there's still some light in the sky, you can also use a neutral density filter, such as this one by Polar Pro. That's gonna reduce the amount of light that comes into the camera's lens and allow you to have a longer shutter time. That longer shutter time is gonna allow more light to write across the image. And if you are recording a, a star lapse, you're probably gonna to need to use an external power source, such as a USB power pack. If you wanna learn a little more about that, you can check out my charging video, which I'll put a link to right up here. Since night photo mode only takes one photo, we actually need to use night lapse mode, and that way we can take a series of night photos. If you're using a Hero 5 Black through a Hero 7 Black, you can just swipe on over to the time lapse modes and select night lapse mode. And that's gonna automatically output photos. If you're using the Hero 8 Black, also swipe over to the time-lapse modes and go down to night-lapse mode, but you need to change the output to output photos. If you're using my book for the Hero 8 Black, you can use the night-lapse photo presets that I gave you in the book. Then you're gonna to need to test out a few shots by changing the shutter time and the ISO. For a rather bright scene, you can lower the ISO down to 100 or 200, and that's gonna give you the longest shutter time possible. I'm not gonna cover all the settings for night photo right now because they can vary depending on your scene, but I'll tell you which settings I use for these shots. And you can test out a few photos and go from there. It is good to know that a lower ISO is gonna give you higher quality photos. And if you go up to a higher ISO, it's gonna be better for dark scenes, but you're gonna get a little more grain and you might even get some hot pixels in there, which I'll show you later when we look at the star lapse. You also wanna make sure that the interval is set to auto on your night lapse so that it can continue recording photo after photo. So once you've got your camera set up, just hit the record button and record a series of photos. If you're recording traffic, it won't take as many photos to create a great composite photo. Whereas if you're recording star trails and you wanna composite one of those images, you're gonna need a few hours. Now that you've got your images, I'm gonna show you how to edit them together to really bring out the lights of your night photos. If you're gonna edit these on your phone, you can use Photoshop Mix, which is a free editing app. You can also do this on a desktop computer using Photoshop, or for a free desktop editing program, you can use GIMP. It just requires a few extra steps. But we're gonna start on the phone here with a simple four shot sequence, just so you can see the technique and how it works. So if you wanna edit the images on your phone, just save the files using the GoPro app to your photo library on your phone. Then open up Photoshop Mix, and click on the plus here to add a new project. Now you're gonna select one of the images from your night lapse. So select image, I'm gonna select this one here. And all we wanna do now is add layers on top of this, and each layer is gonna be one of those images that you recorded. So click the plus symbol here to add another photo. So I'm just gonna click the next one, and I'm gonna do this for the other three photos. Click plus, click plus, and what this is doing is actually just stacking the images on top of each other. And what we wanna do, and this is the trick of the whole compositing images is changing the layer blending mode, how these layers are blended, to the, use the lighten mode. So we're gonna go to blend here, 
And if we were at normal right now, if we change it to lighten, you're going to see that, that the lights from each of those four images are going to come into this one image. So I'm just going to tap on lighten here. And you can see that the traffic lights from all four images now are merged there. I'll show you how it was normal. That's just stacked. And now this is lighten. Normal, lighten. So you can see there's a big difference in the traffic lights because that's four images compared to just one. Now it's going to be more or less dramatic depending on your images and depending on how much traffic you have. Once you've blended the modes, you can click the check mark. And sometimes when you blend them, it's going to pull out light areas from like the clouds, for example, and make the clouds maybe not as sharp. All you need to do to fix that is to just merge down these layers. So just tap on it, merge down, tap on the next one, merge down, the next one, merge down. And now you have a single image here. So now I'm just going to stack another image back on top and then cut out that area where the traffic is so we can see that through the image. So I'm just going to go to my images and pull in whichever image you like. If they're any different, you can just grab one of them. So right now that layer that we just brought in is just stacked on top. If you go to blend here, you'll see it's on normal mode. So it's just stacked on top of the image we created. And we don't want it to be stacked on there. We actually want to see part of the image below it here. So we're going to go to cut out, make sure this is highlighted here make sure the top layer is blue. Go to cut out and then I'm going to go to subtract because I want to pull this part out of that image so we can see what's below it. I'm going to go subtract and just pull out the area where the traffic lights are and then hit the check mark. And now if you look at the image, you can see the, the nice traffic lights below it and you've got the sharp clouds above it. Once you're done editing, you can just click the export button here and save it to your camera roll, or you can also export it to Photoshop if you want to do more work, or you can bring it into Lightroom if you want to do some more color corrections on it. If you want to composite a large batch of photos, you'll need to use a desktop editing app so you can load all of those photos into your files layers. For a desktop editing app, you can use Photoshop or GIMP. I'm going to show you how to do all this in Photoshop just because it's a little simpler. And then in the end of this section, I'll show you the difference if you're using GIMP so that you can do it in GIMP also. The first thing you want to do is just open one of the photos from your batch of photos to have there as a base file. So open up that file and then we're going to load all of the other files into that image as layers. So then just go file, scripts, load files into stack and browse to select the rest of the photos from that batch of photos that you took. When you click open, it's going to create a new file with all of those photos in the file as layers. Now all we need to do is change the blending mode to lighten. So click on the photo right above the bottom layer and then go all the way up to the top and hold down shift and click on the top image. And then on the blending mode up here where it says normal, just change it to lighten and it'll change the blending mode for all of those layers to lighten. If there are some of the images in the batch of photos that you didn't like, the way the lighting came out, you can just toggle on and off the visibility to see how that would affect it without that photo visible. And you can leave those off if you don't want them included in the composite. Sometimes when you're using the light and blending mode to composite a bunch of images, it'll also lighten up areas of the photo that you don't want lightened, like the clouds for example. There's an easy way to solve this, and that's just to choose one of the photos from your batch of photos that has good exposure. And you can duplicate that image by right clicking or a control click on a Mac and duplicate layer. So drag that layer up to the very top of all the layers and change the blending mode back to normal. Now this is going to cover up all the work you just did, but it's going to give you the good exposure in the areas where you want it. So we can go back and bring out the lights that you just worked on by using a layer mask. A layer mask lets you see through that image in certain areas so we can bring the lights back out to reveal them. To add a layer mask, just go up to layer, layer mask, reveal all, and then go to the brush tool. Make sure that the foreground color is set to black and that will reveal what's behind there. And then use the brush tool over the area where the lights are that you want to reveal and that'll slowly bring the lights out into the image. You're going to want to adjust the brush opacity and flow down to 50 or 60 percent so that it can slowly reveal those lights through. And you also might want to adjust the hardness of the brush so that it's not such a fine line where you're using your paintbrush tool on. If you want to fine tune it and adjust it, you can switch to the background and foreground colors. If you bring white up to the foreground color, that will actually cover up what you just did. And if you have black, it will reveal what's underneath. Once you're happy with the look of your photo, you can just merge down the layers. Just go layer, merge visible, and that's going to merge all those layers into one file. 
You can then make overall adjustments to your image by using image adjustments and adjusting the brightness or contrast or the vibrance, however you want to adjust your image so you're happy with the look of it. Once you're done, you can just go up to File and save your file and you've created a beautiful composite image in a matter of minutes. If you're using GIMP to do this, it's exactly the same process except you can't select all the layers at once to change the blending mode. So you'll have to go layer by layer and change the blending mode over to Lighten and it'll slowly reveal your composite night photo. If you're editing a sequence of photos taken from a night lapse into a star trail photo like this one, you can do the exact same technique, it's just a lot more layers to deal with and you'll need a few hours of photos. And with a star trail photo, if you want to, you can actually just light up one of the first photos of the sequence so you don't have to wait there the whole night. You can light it up as you want to and then you can bring that layer back to the top like I showed you how and just layer a mask to the stars beneath it but at least you can have some nice lighting on your subject. When you use a high ISO and a long shutter time on a digital camera, you will get some hot pixels on your image. And this is one of the things that astrophotographers don't like because it looks like they're stars, but they are not stars. And they'll appear stationary. So the stars will rotate, hot pixels won't rotate. They'll stay in the same spot. This is a normal part of digital cameras. So the best thing to do is just composite your images. And afterwards, when you've got your final image, you can just go in and clone out the hot pixels that bother you. The other recommendation is if you can use a lower ISO, that will help reduce those hot pixels. This is just one of the little tips that's in my book, which is full of great ideas for your GoPro camera. So be sure to pick up a copy if you haven't already. And once again, my name is Jordan Hetrick. Thanks for watching and have fun out there filming.